Going out to Rome. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. Birds are indeed chirping and stuff. Uh, actually, it's not beautiful in the great state of Minnesota. We're, we're going to get douched with snow is what it is. Uh, but uh, Sunday, Vikings news dump. So NCAA tournament is, is on right now. And uh, you're throwing it back to last year uh, where Vikings uh, general manager Kwesi Dofa Mensa as well as head coach Kevin O'Connell had a great moment at the NCAAs. So Kwesi's Princeton team took on uh, San Diego State University, uh, Kevin O'Connell's alma mater, and great moment. It was, it was really, really cool, man. And also San Diego State making that run. Yeah. It, it, it was good, but it's all so fun. Or, so this isn't necessarily a hundred percent important, but I like I, I like that Quasi and Kevin O'Connell get along, right? Because y it could be you might see it as a very small thing, but if you actually get along with someone, that means that lines of communication are open. There isn't this tension. There isn't this awkwardness. There isn't this cold war going on. And I think that that relationship. It is the most important relationship on a team outside of quarterback and head coach. A GM and head coach, I think that is extremely important. So I think the Vikings, they have good communication right now. Right now. Of course, that, that can turn as we've seen uh, firsthand, but uh, I'm glad right now they have a good working relationship and this uh, offseason is, is extremely important uh, for the makeup of the Vikings going forward. Also important for the Vikings going forward is Kevin I was going to say Kevin O'Connell, but he's important too. Uh, but Justin freaking Jefferson. So uh, JJ is going to be part of uh, the Netflix documentary Receiver, which uh, is season two, uh, the sequel to Quarterback, which Kirk was on last year. And uh, Kate Fan put this out about uh, the producers talking about JJ. Uh, producer named Tim Rumpf talked about Justin Jefferson. Uh, when he got injured, hamstring popped against the Chiefs. Uh, certain athletes, they might have just folded and said, hey, uh, I don't have a contract. I'm done. It was really great to see Justin be a team first person saying, I need to be back for the player I am. I need to be back for my teammates, end quote. And that's Netflix uh, receiver producer Tim Rumpf uh, about Justin Jefferson's behind the scenes uh, unselfish. And yeah, after JJ uh, had his hamstring injury, he easily could have been like, okay, this is a pretty severe injury. Uh, you know, I he, he did miss seven games, but he could have been like, I don't have a long-term deal. Uh, I'm going to milk this thing for all it's worth. I, I don't need to be around the team. I'm going to just be at home by myself and, and I'm going to take the rest of the season off until they pay me, right? But he, he did not do that. He traveled the team. He hyped guys up, and he, he was a true leader of men. And you know, Je Jefferson has talked before. like He does not take that, that captain letter C on his chest uh, lightly like he needs to be a leader out there and that's exactly what he did and it's something that I I've loved about Jefferson and I th that's part of the storyline that I can't wait to see where yeah it would have been great to see Jefferson during his offensive player of the year campaign MVP finalist but uh, I think that you're going to see a lot of nitty-gritty stuff with Jefferson and uh, a lot about his character which you already know uh, is extremely high where yes he's going to get paid he deserves to get paid uh, but he is not He's not that diva receiver who's all about him and his stats. He is about winning. He is about this team that's in his DNA. It's in his double helix. And, again, I can't wait to see some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, man. Uh, something I also can't wait to see is the Vikings eventually trading up, uh, but may not be with two and the commies. So, Tom Palacero, uh, with Caleb Williams widely viewed as a lock to go number one uh, in the next month's draft, uh, is the phone ringing at number two? Dan Quinn, a new head coach of the co Commanders, uh, told me yes, but it take a lot for the commies to consider moving, which uh, understandable because the commies uh, sit in there at two. They do have their choice uh, of quarterbacks uh, outside of Caleb Williams, whether they like Drake May, whether they like Jaden Daniels, whether they like J.J. McCarthy, Dynamite. Although, them sticking and picking, taking Bo Nix at two, let's get nuts. Let, let's get nuts, man. Uh, but this is what I said. Uh, yeah, uh, about the phone ringing, uh, about teams asking about two. Yes, I would say it's ringing, and because, like you said, of the talent of the group this year, Quinn said. Uh, and so I would anticipate him fielding these calls as it goes through, and usually it's not necessarily later than number six or seven. Hmm. Not later than six or seven. The, the Giants or the Titans. Hmm. Uh, but those people... What do you mean those people uh, who are usually in the top four or five? Uh, there's somebody that somebody has targeted, and I think that's mostly like, well, I've got to take a shot. A lot of times it's it's no, like thanks for calling, uh, but it is part of the process, and you have to do your due diligence to listen uh, and to find out just to make sure. Uh, like, is there some uh, something that you just couldn't refuse? So basically, 
basically they're not trading the pick. And we compared it to it's like uh, Rick Harrison from Pawn Stars. He has a Super Bowl ring, which he's never going to sell it, but it's for sale, but for like a hundred grand, which no one's going to pay for a Super Bowl ring of uh, uh, like a slappy backup. Uh, but two two would be fun, where you would have your choice uh, of May, Daniels, McCarthy, etc. And if the Vikings want to get uh, three, four, five, it's board dependent. And, yeah, it could be a spot where the Vikings are pretty even on uh, May, Daniels, and McCarthy. But having your choice to have that guy could make sense. But, yeah, I think getting up to two, I mean, it's going to cost a lot to get up to three, four, five. I, I think two may just be, like, out of the range of the Vikings. So it may be three ones, a third, a player. Nah, nah. Fair, fair, fair. Uh, something that where the Vikings uh, also should be interested in is Auburn Pro Day. Uh, Jim Nagy, who does a fantastic job of running the Senior Bowl. Uh, 30 teams were at Auburn Football Pro Day yesterday, including defensive back coaches for four clubs, Vikings, blah, 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 blah. Uh, there to see uh, Namaya Pritchett, uh, as well as DJ James. And uh, a guy that really intrigues me is Jalen Simpson. So uh, this is what Jim writes. Free safety, nickel, outside cornerback Jalen Simpson. Of course, Flores stresses versatility uh, on the back end of his defense. Uh, actually, Defense writ large, mm. uh, who had the third fastest 40 at the combine among safety group 445, hit a 40 inch vertical jump and a 7.033 cone and a 4.5 short shuttle, which is just good, which is pretty damn good. Uh, and Jim points out that the DBs are seen as a late day two, early day three type area. Uh, and Jalen Simpson, you know, like we mentioned, I think that he is a guy that definitely does have uh, some versatility. And I think that he could play a very good role uh, in the back end uh, of Flores' defense. And you know, the Vikings having seven day three selections as of this point, uh, I think doing some homework uh, on Simpson is really important. Plus, uh, it's really good to see Durante Jones uh, out there getting a firsthand look at some of these guys that could be in the mix for the Vikings in the secondary. Also in the mix for the Vikings on the defense side of the ball, Chris Jenkins. That's right. Uh, the Vikings had defensive coaches watch D-line Chris Jenkins at Michigan's Pro Day yesterday uh, per Tony Pauline. Uh, Jenkins could be an option for Minnesota in day two of the draft, which is where he's projected to be picked now. Problem is the Vikings. So Jenkins probably wouldn't have been a really solid pick at 42 when the Vikings were in the second round, but now the Vikings have this chasm between picks 23 and 108 where you know, Jenkins is likely to go now. If the Vikings stick and pick at 11-23, could Jenkins be in the mix at 20, uh, at 23? Sure, he certainly could be. But also, uh, again, it's good that you know the Vikings obviously doing their jobs, doing their due diligence. And th this is a – it's a unique defensive tackle class because it's not exceptionally deep, uh, but it is thick THICC with guys uh, in that day two strata, which are, uh, are going to come in and make differences. Yeah, so, and I think Chris Jenkins uh, is a perfect combination uh, of heart hustle, stopping stop the run, as well as getting after it or rushing the passer. I think that he's developing, growing, and showing and maturing as a pass rusher. And I think that he really has a chance to uh, trend up uh, as he heads into the NFL. R really big fan of Chris Jenkins. Also, you know, a guy I was a big fan of uh, coming to the draft, so Jadavion Clowney, who sort of made his career off of one tackle in the bowl game against Michigan. But uh, Clown Shoes is a free agent again. Uh, Jordan Schultz, Bleach Report. Following Jadavion Clowney's visit with the Jets, he and the organization have remained in constant contact uh, with one source describing New York as highly motivated to try and secure a deal with Clowney. I'm told both the Panthers and the Ravens remain interested in him as well after his nine-and-a-half sack season in Baltimore. Now, Clowney's weird, where in the sense that he he came into the league with all this this hype, number one overall pick and stuff, and he's been fine. Like he hasn't been the superstar, he hasn't been the Miles Garrett, Daniel Hunter, T.J. Watt, Max Crosby type edge rusher. Uh, but I know, like he he was probably was best suited. Uh, in Houston when he was playing that that five tech spot when he was uh, paired up with JJ Watt but he's really bounced around the league Seattle Tennessee uh had two seasons in Cleveland which I mean has been his spot uh since leaving uh the Texans uh and then Baltimore last year nine and a half sacks I mean I, again Baltimore and Eric DaCosta and even go back to Ozzy they're so good at just restocking that front seven whether it's uh value draft picks or whether it's value free agents they're just it's remarkable and something that the Vikings sh should and could aspire to. But also, Clowney wearing 24 is just weird. Just weird, man. But you know, Clowney is the definition of, hey, I'm going to take a one-year deal wherever and, and put up some numbers, but I'm still going to bounce. So, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, also, speaking of free agency, 
So Odell Beckham Jr. continues to just float out there, had a visit with the Dolphins. And, you know, a couple of years ago, in, fully on in. And I feel like to a degree, some of us, myself included at times, are a little bit reductive of OBJ's career where, I mean, back in the Giants, back in the day, uh, he was a, a true blue superstar and his career was not made off of one catch. Although that the one catch certainly did hype, hype things up, where it, it is kind of similar to Clowney, where they're remembered for one play, and that play is going to be on repeat uh, whenever their career is all said and done. But I mean, o, OBJ was a bad dude uh, with the Giants, and he had a thousand yard season with the Browns, uh, and then won a Super Bowl with the with the Rams. Uh, you know, picked up mid season after he got cut by the Browns, and yes, uh, the whole thing about Skolas, you and Justin Jefferson is tight with OBJ and all that stuff, and like, hey, maybe he can come in. And and, and be some veteran uh, wide receiver depth. But also, I mean, you look at his Ravens numbers last year, he got $14 million bucks to be rather pedestrian and also just be non-existent uh, in the playoffs. So, eh, 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 nah, nah. Uh, so e- even though OBJ, he's advanced in age and maybe his contract demands aren't wh- where they're going to be uh, the last couple of years, but I-, I feel like, so... I mean, the Vikings would have had all the opportunities in the world to bring uh, Odell Beckham Jr. aboard. But as we said, hey, Kevin O'Connell coached him with the Rams, and you know they won a Super Bowl together. And hey, Quasey was in Cleveland uh, when they brought him aboard, and ultimately when they cut him as well. So I, I think that for all the reasons why, hey, they know OBJ, uh, why don't they bring him in, are, are the reasons why they won't bring him in, because they know OBJ. I mean, familiarity is truly a double-edged sword. So uh, again, I, I know that that would be a fun idea, but... Nah, nah, nah. Uh, but for the real Vikings wide receiver three, uh, so the Vikings, they brought back Brandon Powell. Uh, they did not re-sign K.J. Osborne, and, and Powell is seen as having a pretty bright future, per persuasion. Uh, it seems like wide receiver Brandon Powell is in the driver's seat to be the Vikings wide receiver three heading into the season, per Alec Lewis of The Athletic. Quote, uh, O'Connell likes Powell and prioritized bringing him back. Health is the issue with Naylor, uh, while Trent Sherfield, new free agent wide receiver, uh, is a big body slot option. Uh, the Vikings could also draft a receiver late uh, to add to the mix. And like we said, seven uh, day three selections. But as Ryan Meow, uh, I think you have to say also, people get so mad when I put Addison slightly above Jefferson. Uh, th- this is when uh, JJ was coming back from injury. Ha- haven't reshuffled the order. Doesn't matter. Uh, but Powell, uh, I think, is in that driver's seat for a wide receiver three. And I, you know, the fact that Powell did have some big time catches last year. When there was a gong show at quarterback, uh, I would like to see him be more involved in the offense. And he, the Vikings have, have had this tradition, what's up, Sylvie, uh, of their wide receiver three uh, being a little bit undersized guy, whether it be K.J. Osborne, whether it be Jarius Wright. Uh, I, I think Brandon Powell could fit that niche. And I would like to see him more involved in the offense, not tushing the push, not pushing the tush push. Mm, none of that, but uh, I think that he does bring a little something, something, and I think that he is uh, explosive with the ball in his hands. I really silver. <laughs> Got so- hey silver. Do you think that Tristan Jackson, the pride of Syracuse, formerly Michigan State, can really grow and show this year? No, I'm just gonna walk away. Yeah, get get out of here, Vaughn. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, like yeah, the Vikings. Probably could and should uh, add a, a body in the receiver room day three, but you're feeling really good about this room. So J.J. Addison, obviously the best wide receiver do in the National Football League when healthy, uh, and Brandon Powell. I mean, obviously Kevin O'Connell, you know, coached him with the Rams. Uh, there's a lot of love and trust there, so I'm glad that they prioritized and brought him back. Dekeel Harry, former first round pick. Uh, oh. Uh, J.J. McCarthy needs a tall receiver. Mm. And Jalen Speedy Naylor, we said a bunch, like he was impressive last off season, but he just – he, he got injured on the first freaking day of training camp, and it was just behind the eight ball all year. He's got all the talent in the world. Just got to stay healthy. Uh, Sherfield, I like. Ja- Jackson had some nice moments last year, so we'll see. I, I feel like the wide receiver room uh, is in a pretty good spot. But uh, that's it. Uh, enjoy the rest of the uh, round of 32 games. Let's see who gets to Sweet 16 on Sunday. Uh, and you guys are the best. You know what to do. Skull production value. 